This week on Spoke TV. Schools have been threatened around the region in last three weeks through graffiti which is compromising the security of students and staff in schools. A student at the school uh, has been arrested and charged with mischief under $5,000 and uttering threats. And we will have a look at parents' struggle in finding affordable childcare. Uh, with payment, you have to have a job to pay it, but you know what I mean? Like, if you can't pay it, then your child can't be here, then you can't work. Plus, pansies are guiding us into spring as they wait to be delivered to the garden. All this and more in this week's Spoke TV. Hello and welcome to Spoke TV, Conestoga College's weekly news show produced by second year journalism students. I am Tushar Sethi. And I am Farsha Sri Ganesh. Schools are being threatened around the region, leaving some members of the public frustrated and unsettled. For the past three weeks, anonymous threats targeting students and staff causing harm have been witnessed in six different high schools in the Waterloo region. The most recent threat was received Wednesday, April 3rd to Jacob Hesplus Secondary School in Cambridge in the form of graffiti. Sherry Greeno, the spokesperson for the Waterloo Regional Police, says a female has been arrested in connection to the most recent shooting threat. A uh, student at the school uh, has been arrested and charged with mischief under $5,000 and uttering threats. In Kitchener, Huron Heights Secondary School, Cameron Heights Collegiate, Eastwood Collegiate Institute, Grand River Collegiate Institute and in Cambridge, Glenview Park Secondary School have also received threats written either on bathroom stalls or on the walls. The Waterloo Regional Police are taking these threats seriously and now have detectives investigating the threats. Anyone with any information can contact Crime Stoppers or the Waterloo Regional Police Services. Many parents struggle to find affordable child care and Premier Kathleen Wynne says she has the answer to those concerns. Spoke TV's Nadia Alawad has more on this story. By 2020, families in Ontario may be eligible for free child care. The Liberal spring re-election platform includes a $2.2 billion budget boost that will offer children from age two and a half to four free licensed care. Early childhood educator Brittany Campbell says she thinks this is a move in the right direction as many families are unable to keep up with costs. It's very difficult and uh, with payment you have to have a job to pay it, but you know what I mean, like if you can't pay it then your child can't be here, then you can't work. So how are these people supposed to live? More than 100,000 children could be served under the proposed child care plan. The average Ontario family with one preschooler would save about $17,000. An analysis done by University of Toronto economist Gord Cleveland found that only 20% of families with one child can afford licensed care in Ontario. Janet Kasai, a mother of two, okay. says although she is not against but free child care, she believes everyone should be required to pay a small standard fee not based on their income. We don't have to classify low income, high income, or anything that is we are we are separating the family because even the um, low income is getting some money from the government and was for the child benefits right so they should use it the government will also bring early childhood educators wages up to the level of ECEs in the school system Campbell says that many workers in this field have been commuting to cities like Toronto in search of higher pay and that an increase in their wages is needed for everyone's benefit we need it, like it's not really a want anymore, it's a need, it's a necessity to keep our staff happy, healthy, and you know what I mean? keep our daycares up and running. If implemented, this initiative would make Ontario the first jurisdiction in North America to offer the service without charge. For Spoke TV, I'm Nadia Alawad. Thanks, Nadia. Get ready to pay more tax next time you buy the beer. Domestic and imported beer got a tax hike recently. Finance Minister Bill Morneau announced in the 2017 budget that beer tax is increasing by 1.5%. The price on beer went up on April 1st. This hike in beer taxes will continue annually, but thousands have signed a petition created by Beer Canada, a trade association for major brewers, to stop the hike. Beer economy generated $5.7 billion in tax in 2016. So be prepared to pay more when you buy beer next time. Coming up, we take a look at the reality of fake news. All that and more after the break. Pansies are guiding us into spring as they wait to be delivered to the garden markets in KW region. Our spoke reporter, Kasada Black, brings us the story. 
Spring is in the air at Warren's Greenhouses on Strain Street in Kitchener. They are the exclusive wholesaler of pansies for all the Loblaws owned stores in the KW region. Because it's like it's like almost like fresh air coming in and smelling all the flowers. It's it's lovely. It's like a natural perfume. Uh, well, pansies are a, a frost tolerant flower, so they are about the first things that can go out in the in the cooler weather and they can tolerate the cold nights. So pansies can tolerate some frost. Too much frost makes it difficult for them to come back. Here at the Warren greenhouses, these pansies will remain here until the temperatures in the outdoors stabilize at zero. Only then will they be able to get shipped out to the Loblaw stores locations in the KW region. A lot of the questions are, can I put them out yet? Can I do this? Like, how do I deadhead? This kind of thing. So you can, I tell people they can put them out now. They just have to be really careful with their nights because it can mark up your bloom and things like that. You want to watch your minus temperatures. Uh, the pansies of Warrens are locally grown and they are open to the general public. For Spoke TV, I'm Cassetta Black. Thanks, Sandra. Truth and integrity are principles that journalists are told and expected to uphold in the execution of their jobs. But recently, many doubts and concern have been rising about the fake news in the media. Spoke TV's Matthew Dever Johnston takes a look at the issue. Fake news. It's a term we've heard a lot of in recent times a term that's seen a rise in use since the election of President Donald Trump. Can you give us a question? Don't be rude. Can you no, give I'm not us gonna a give question? you a question. I'm you, not going to give you a can question. You can you stay categorical? You are fake news. Sir. And one liberally used by quite a few media outlets on the regular. However, as dire as things may seem, the reality may not be as bleak as some say. Rob Reinhardt is a stay-at-home father of two and an avid consumer of news, usually watching daily. And in spite of the recent fake news hysteria, Rob still puts trust and faith in the news media. Well, I've been told, I've been told not to, but to be honest with you, I trust them pretty much 100%. That's all? I, I'm, I'm a trusting person. So that's across all, like, all state, more or less all stations, all... Well, 95%, I know, I know some people say take things with a grain of salt, do a 50-50 thing, but... Uh, you know, I'm more like 95%. Um, I trust that w what they're going to put on, maybe because they're regulated, right? They have to check things. They can be sued by people if they're wrong, et cetera, et cetera. So, so I think, I think they're going to be, they're trying to do be 100% truthful. This sentiment, the idea that the news media have their actions checked by their own culpability, is reinforced by Carla Fitzsimmons, a producer at Rogers TV with 23 years of experience including 12 years of work at CTV News. Oh, well, you have sources and you have, um, you have to have at least two to three sources on any story, like, um, and you have to have both sides of the story. And that's not just with CTV, that's with all media, is that, that is traditional media, in, in any kind of news media, you need to have your sources, but you also need to have both sides of the story. And you, as the reporter or as the organization, must remain bi unbiased towards it. Larry Cornies, program coordinator of Conestoga College's journalism program, and a man with almost 50 years of experience in the journalism field, agrees with Fitzsimmons, and in addition, believes that Canadians are a bit better off when it comes to trust in the media compared to the United States. You know, I think for the most part they do. Uh, news organizations never stand very high on the ladder of credibility and believability and trustworthiness. But to the extent that, w that, uh, that Canadians seem to uh, trust their media or, or consume media and stay on top of what's happening and respond to media, I think those are good things and, and I, th I think we're in a better place than the U.S. media are in that respect. Corny's statements are backed up by an Ipsos poll done in 2017 which found that 69% of Canadians trust the news media, while various polls place U.S. trusted media at between 35 and 50%. According to experts, when it comes to fake news, it's best to use trusted news sites. But also, make sure to double check for yourself, just in case. For Spoke TV, I'm Matthew DeVette Johnston. After the break, we take a look at how Black Panther became such a hit at the box office. Today we're joined by film critic
Kristen Apostolovsky. He has seen Black Panther and joins us to share his thoughts about the movie that has brought in nearly $1.3 billion in revenue at the box office. Thank you for being with us today, Kristen. Thanks for having me. Perfect. What did you think of the movie? So, typically a lot of superhero movies I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, they follow the same linear progression throughout the entire movie, but Black Panther does it quite well, even though you still have that sort of linear progression where the hero has to overcome whatever hardships it, he may find. But he looks a lot more inwards on himself, which makes it a lot more interesting because you see kind of what he personally struggles with and what his tribe as well has struggled with. So it makes it, f I feel more connected to the characters to that. And even the, uh, the Killmonger development with the main villain was incredibly interesting. And the way that they even brought up the side character, or I call them side, but there was a large main cast. All of them also had their own turmoils, all their own personal fights that you saw throughout and even contemplating very serious things like betraying their king, not betraying their king. Um, like choosing sides is really hard, especially in a political war. And what, do you, what political impact do you think this movie had? So this had a, I, I thought it had a very huge political impact. Obviously the cast was something to talk about. It was the first big uh, black cast that existed. And there was, it, they did it incredibly well. The cast, I think, had probably the most emotion that can go into their roles Especially when, when you think about what they're doing, it's not like they're actually out there doing what they're doing. This is all like in their minds, they're imagining it, they're getting into the feel of these characters. So the fact that it was done so well and that they definitely casted the right people. Now in terms of political past the cast, um, it talks a lot about towards the ending, if you haven't seen it, obviously this is a little bit of a spoiler, but towards the ending when they decide to side with the UN and they decide to help other people, it makes us think a lot more about what we could do as a society because they have the power to help other people but and so do we so does a lot of different nations but what we choose to do with the power is something that when black panther thought about it he said we have all these resources we could be helping those people to get through their lives to help better the world instead of what killmonger wanted was a large war do you have two very different sides where you've got peace and uh, community or you've got war and hatred so I'm, I'm glad that they took the take on it because we're in a time now where we have to look within our, within our borders, within our walls, within ourselves to figure out are we going to help people or are we going to go out of it and hate each other. Well, moving forward, what do you think the Black Panther holds? Well, like I said, I'm not a big fan of superhero movies, but I was quite pleased with Black Panther. And I think the direction that they're taking it in is good. I find it hard to believe that they'd be able to find another villain quite like Killmonger. He definitely encompassed a lot of what went against the Wakandan beliefs and what even the Black Panther thought as well. So when you think about it like that, I think Black Panther 2 is probably going to have a villain. I, I, I haven't read the comics myself. So it's going to be a villain that I probably wouldn't think of. And it's probably not going to be something directly influencing his tribe. It'll probably be on a more global scale as well because obviously they do join the UN. They do give over their... Um, their resources to help everybody. So I think moving forward with the box office success, obviously grossing to almost 1.3 billion is a huge number for a movie. So I think with their success, there's definitely going to be a Black Panther too. It's just how it's going to be done, we have to wait to see. Well, thank you so much for coming here tonight, Kristen. And thank you for having me on. In sports, we'll start with the OHL. The Kitchener Rangers are moving on to the second round versus Sanya, staying in Game 1 this Friday at home. Kitchener Rangers forward Joseph Girafa and Adam Maskerin for the OHL awards. Girafa, a third-year forward defenseman, is a finalist for the Most Sportsmanlike Player of the Year, while Maskerin is the Rangers nominee for Most Outstanding Player. Winners will be announced throughout the playoffs. In the NHL, the Toronto Maple Leafs can clinch their best single season point total in franchise history with a win or overtime loss tonight against the Devils in New Jersey. Toronto ties its franchise record 103 point season with a win over Buffalo on Monday night. Around the league, Winnipeg hosts the Calgary Flames, Edmonton is home to the Golden Knights and Montreal visit Detroit. In the NBA, the Malwick Bucks can clinch a playoff sport at, spot as they host Brooklyn in one of the six games on tonight's schedule. Malwick needs one more win to secure a postseason berth for a second straight season. Last night, Toronto got home. Last night, Toronto got some much needed breathing room at the Eastern Conference with 96 and 78 win over the Boston Celtics. 
That puts the Raptors up by three games on Boston with four games left. And in baseball, the Washington Nationals and New York Mets will kick off the 11-game Major League Baseball schedule this afternoon. The Toronto Blue Jays are idle. They will kick off a nine-game road trip tomorrow against the Texas Rangers. Thanks, Tushar. The season for the KW Titans has come to an end. Spoke TV's Jason Asa was at the final game and brings you all the highlights. On March 31st, the KW Titans hosted a Coach's Corner fan appreciation. They played the Windsor Express to close the season with a thank you to the fans for coming out at the Kitchen Memorial Auditorium. Year 2 of the Titans season was seen as a rebuilding year for the squad to find the right balance of chemistry between the coaches and players after a losing season, grabbing only 8 wins and racking up 32 losses. Newly promoted head coach Calvell Johnson gives us a first-hand recap on what to expect next year from the Titans ownership. Starting off with a, a defensive mindset is key. This is a high-scoring league so if you're a team that can take some pride in, in stopping a team from scoring and, and stringing stops together and then playing with a, a, an, a confidence on the offensive end of the floor. At the half both teams were tied up at 58 and both teams shooting just 52 percent from the paint and expresses Maurice Jones lit up the first half with 25 points. I'm on site at the Kitchen Memorial Auditorium where the KW Titans were shooting lights out from behind the arc in their last game of the season. In the third, it was more of the same as Titans at Horton took over the game to lead the Express by 13 points. And he talks about his performance. It's just the, the positivity that Cavill brings. And they give everybody else the, the positivity too. And we just play free. In the fourth, Titans took a commanding lead to seal the final win of the season with a score of 129 to 119 with the help of Tremar Sunderland scoring in the last minutes of the game. Plus, the fans were not disappointed with the efforts the Titans showed in their last game. For Spoke TV, I'm Jason Asa. Thanks, Jason. Varsha, what do you think about beer price hike? I think the beer price hike is actually just going to pay for children's daycare. Well, I mean, it's fine with me, but then if you have to pay annual increase in the beer, that's not okay with me. Well, that's all we have for you this week. For more stories and information, visit our website at spoketv.ca and follow us on Twitter at SpokeTV.